As I begin this video, I need to make a slight disclaimer. Uh, after I've recorded these videos, uh, a well-respected engine builder within the GoPed community reached out and just let me know that the product that I suggested, while it's good for aluminum to aluminum, uh, it does contain a product that can be corrosive to copper. So 3Bond does not recommend their 1211 when copper is being used as a silicone sealant. Uh, the main concern that they cite is that it has an oxime type curing method, which can be corrosive to copper. The reason that they don't advise it is because they're concerned of the off-gassing that happens and how it can be corrosive to electronic components. Where these engines are very basic, I don't think that there will be any kind of issue with that. So I have gone forward and I have used that product. Again, I did this all prior to that knowledge and information. For me, I will never reuse these transfer port covers or gaskets or the cylinder when it comes time to replace them. So I am viewing those as consumable products. If this was a much more expensive engine, then I would certainly remove any of this sealant. Just note that I do suggest using a silicone sealant on the transfer port covers. Find one that is both compatible for use with copper alloy as well as gasoline and oil. With that said, let's get into the installation of the 40 millimeter Fujiwara top end on the Zenoa G320 engine. So in this video today, we are going to go over the installation of the Fujiwara 40 millimeter G350 upgrade cylinder top end. I have partially disassembled my motor down to this uh, state so that it's a little bit easier to follow along on what needs to be done. I have already installed the transfer port covers and have done the sealant. We will go over that in the first step. As you get your engine prepped and ready for this installation kit, there are a few things that you will want to have on hand to begin with. You will need silicone sealant for the transfer board covers. I use Klotz Synthetic Assembly Lube. You can also use simply just two-stroke oil. We're gonna use that on the inside of the cylinder as well as the piston in the ring when we are assembling it so that nothing gets scratched or damaged during the process. I keep a set of nitro gloves on hand because it does get a little bit greasy and messy, so this is nice. I also have various Allen wrenches and pliers as needed. Uh, during this disassembly process. Pretty simple, as well as just a rag or towel to have on hand to wipe things off as needed. So let's dive right in. We'll get through the transfer port cover seal. Begin by getting your silicone sealant, your transfer port covers, as well as your copper gaskets. We're gonna lay those out. And what I like to do is I'll take my silicone sealant and then I will put it on something just like a cardboard box and then I'll spread it with something easy like a zip tie or something else. What you're looking for is nice, complete coverage, uh, not using too much of it. And once you've got the transfer port cover with some sealant, some of the form in place gasket, you'll put that copper gasket on it. And then we will again apply more of the silicone sealant to this side so that both sides are nicely sealed up. Take care to make sure that you don't get any of that silicone sealant on the transfer port cover that goes inside of the motor. Once that looks good, you'll place that onto the cylinder. I clean out the little holes so that there's not so much of that sealant in there. You'll then install those screws. These are to be torqued to 1.7 Newton meters or approximately 17 inch pounds. Let that cure and you're good to go. So to begin from this point, we're going to remove the original top end. We've already undone all of the screws holding the plastic cover on. At this stage, we don't need to remove the ignition coil, but we are going to remove these four bolts holding the cylinder to the crankcase. These are removed with a four millimeter wrench. This particular Zenoa 32 hasn't seen a lot of runtime, so this top end is actually fairly new. The whole engine is pretty new, but it's always worth the upgrade. So we're going to carefully wiggle that a little bit, and then we're gonna carefully remove this piston from the cylinder. So one of the things that I'm not crazy about with the standard Zenoa gaskets is it does leave a bit of a mess. As you can see, there's a lot of residue left over on this cylinder. 
So the next step is to remove the piston from the connecting rod. There's a small snap ring that retains the piston on that piston pin that's inside of there. And so we're going to remove that. So I'm going to use this pry tool. I'm gonna to be very careful with this little pick tool to get around and underneath that snap ring. I will likely damage this snap ring in removing it, which is okay because I have new snap rings that I will be installing. That actually came out really smooth and unsurprising, it kind of flung off into nowhere. Uh, this is why it is nice to work either on a pit mat or over a towel just to keep track of something like this. At this point, you'll be able to push that piston pin out. So this piston pin is a piece that is reused from your stock setup. The new Fujiwara top end does not include this. Also not included are the piston washers. I'm going to be reusing these particular pieces. They do have orientation on how they go. So there's a recessed and then a flat part. The flat part goes outside. That recessed portion goes toward the bearing. The Fujiwara top end also does not include the pin bearing. These are fairly durable, but at the same time, they're also very inexpensive. So I have a brand new one that I will be replacing it with. We are going to remove the cylinder base gasket. Depending on how much residue there is, you'll want to make sure that this area is nice and clean before installing the new cylinder. Remember that the crankcase is just a soft aluminum, so you don't want to use any kind of harsh metal to try to clean that off or else you could cause damage to the top of that crankcase. So let's move on to our piston. We're going to install the ring and this is where we're going to use some of our uh, assembly lubrication. Please keep in mind inside the ring groove there is a small pin that is made to align for the piston ring. So the split in the piston ring right here that is where it will rest is it's going to collapse over that aligning pin. So we're going to get some oil all along the top of that piston as well as in the groove. We're also going to lubricate the piston ring. And then we will slowly get that piston ring into the groove. Having that oil is really important so you don't scratch any of those surfaces of the piston. We will now install the piston back onto the connecting rod. It is important to note that on the top of the piston that there is a directional arrow and the directional arrow faces the exhaust port. So when you're looking at the engine from this point, the arrow should be on this side. It should be facing this direction. So I'm going to coat my piston pin bearing in some grease. As we get ready to install the piston onto that, uh, we can install one of our piston pin clips uh, before we try to install it on this way. That way it's easier to uh, push the piston pin in and, and then we will only have to insert the one piston pin clip with it attached to the connecting rod. As there is an opening, I typically like to orient my piston pin clip so that the opening is towards the bottom. That is just kind of, that's what I personally do. I'm going to install a little bit of oil on the retaining clip as well as the groove inside of the piston just so again that I'm not scratching anything as we go. So with one of the open ends, I'm going to carefully get it started in that groove Sometimes it helps to use a little bit of pliers, but you just have to be really careful to not scratch anything with those metal tips. Installing the snap ring is not easy and you want to take your time doing it. The best way is to get this open-ended part started on the bottom and then you slowly work it and push around until you are able to push this little tiny other end into the opposite side. This takes some time and some patience to make sure that you don't damage the piston. Uh, you may lose one of these things, so consider keeping 
a spare on hand. They are fairly inexpensive to get. So with this side on, our arrow right here facing this direction, we're going to take our piston, we're going to install it over those washers and hold that in place while we take our piston pin. And with this piston pin, this should be oiled as well. Just gently align those and push them into place. With the piston installed on the pin, I'll then put in that other retaining clip. With the piston snap rings installed, it is worth it to take the time to make sure that those snap rings are inside that retaining groove completely on both sides and that you have oriented the snap ring placement. You want to double check and make sure that your exhaust orientation is correct on the piston. We're going to install the cylinder base gasket and then we're going to install the cylinder itself, making sure that right here is where your alignment pin is for the piston ring and where it collapses. So we're going to make sure that the inside of the cylinder is coated with some oil. So the bottom of the piston has these little nubs and what you want to do is with one hand, you're going to collapse the piston ring over that alignment pin. And then with these, you're going to carefully slide that on top of the piston so that then these nubs are collapsing the piston ring and then you're able to slide the cylinder on. So I'll show that how that's done. So now that I've got the nubs covering that piston ring, I can just very carefully make sure that it's aligned right so don't push anything you don't want to bend that that piston ring and then it should slide on smoothly so with the cylinder on the gasket in place we are going to reinstall our bolts i will have the torque specs listed below in the description uh, but it's it's not a lot of torque to install these bolts you want to tighten the cylinder bolts in a cross pattern configuration until each of those bolts are properly torqued. Again, it doesn't take a lot of torque. This is just a cast aluminum piece. The next step will be to reinstall our ignition coil here. So from the original cylinder, we will take an M3 wrench to remove these two bolts. Behind the cylinder, there are two ignition coil spacers. They're little plastic washers. You want to make sure that you don't lose these. So those are going to go onto the new cylinder. The ignition coil has elongated holes and that is so that you can adjust the gap between the ignition pickups and your flywheel. And so what we're going to do is we need to make sure that we space this correctly. Uh, we do have different flywheel air gap tools. If you don't have an air gap tool, I will show you what you do. So with my ignition coil bolts installed, but not so tight that I can still kind of wiggle it. This is kind of the wiggle that you're looking for. You wanna make sure that the ignition coil doesn't drag on the flywheel. This will damage the coil, it'll damage the flywheel, the engine won't run correctly. You also wanna make sure that it's not too far away because if it's too far away, you don't get a good spark. If you do not have an air gap tool, what I would recommend doing is taking something like this header card or a business card, and you're going to put that in between the ignition coil and the flywheel. So you can see I have a gap here. It's wiggling and loose. With my paper between both coils, I'm gonna rotate the flywheel so that the magnet is sitting underneath the coil. With that in place, I'm gonna push down on the coil and then I'm gonna tighten these two bolts. I'm not gonna over tighten them. These do have a torque spec as well, which will be listed in the description. With those screws tightened down, I'm gonna remove that paper. And then what we're looking for is we wanna make sure that this spins freely without any touching. I can see a small gap between the flywheel and the ignition coil so that I know that I have the correct clearance that we're not gonna drag. I'm going to torque these bolts down and then we'll get off to the next step.
So at this stage, your top end is installed. What remains is going to be installing my insulator manifold onto this. I have new gaskets that I'll be using for that. You will be installing your exhaust. I have a new gasket for that as well. Install a new spark plug. Reinstall your rear fan cover and then your clutch assembly. And then we will move on to the break-in, which will be in another video. It's that simple to get your top end installed. It's just important to take your time and just be a little bit cautious and careful while you're installing some of these components. I hope you're able to do it yourself successfully and that this video was helpful and informative. You can show your support for our channel by subscribing, hitting the like button, commenting. If you would like to upgrade your own Zenoa G320RC into a 35cc engine, you could do so by clicking in the links that are found below. You can get your Zenoa Fujiwara 35 cc top end through taylor rc as well as kraken rc thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next video